Welcome to the fourth video. In this video, we will demonstrate how to perform NCA in POS SEM with Smart POS. As we will have quite a lot to cover, this video will be further divided into three parts so that it doesn't look too scary to you and then it might be more easy for you to follow. Part one, we will be talking about the setting up of the model and the evaluating of the model. We need to set up the structure model, check the reliability and validity through Chromebox Alpha, ABE, Composite Reliability, and the HTMT Discriminant Validity, R Square P-Value, VIF, and also check the Q Square POS SEM root mean squared error and mean absolute error. Part two will focus on the NCA model and the NCA findings on the latent variable scores. The key parameters will be d-value, p-value, and accuracy. Part 3, we will interpret the results from both necessity perspective and the, and the sufficiency perspective. Let's see the step-by-step -step guidelines first. I recommend you to check this after the video to see more detail here. The step 1 and step 2 are the preparation works before you start analyzing your data. Step one and step two are preparation work we need to do before we run the analysis. We need to outline our hypothesis and support our hypothesis with theories from both necessity logic and sufficiency logic. Then we can prepare and check the data following the PLS SEM guideline. After that, we run the PLS SEM analysis. Okay, let's get started. We open the Smart PLS 4. It is opened. This is my workspace. You can switch it to other location or you can create your own workspace. For example, here you can create a new one and name it the way you like it and then you select it. But here I am going to keep my settings. On the right, you will see there are lots of sample projects that you can make use of. Here, if your Smart PLS is updated, you will be able to see the NCA sample project here. You can install it. But here today, we're going to start from scratch. We will create a new project. Here, I will be using the technology acceptance model. So TAM NCA. We create it. We need to import the data. I have my data here already. You you will see this This data is available online from the Mendeley, but you will also find it in the link below this video. We open it, just check if it's correct, and then the scale type here, check if it's correct. If it's wrong, you can use the box change, and then the mini minimum value and the maximum value here. You will see most of the constructs here are 1 to 5, that's because these indicators were measured by a five point Likert scale. This construct was measured by seven point Likert scale, so you will see the maximum value. So we'll see that the maximum value is seven. There's also no missing value here. We import the data. The data are here, ready. Now we need to create our structural model, POS SEM model. We will name it PLS SEM. Save it. In this model, we will have two dependent variables. The first one is adoption intention. We move it a little bit to here. The second one is the technology use. Now we need to drag all the independent variable here. First, emotional value. Emotional value. Then we have ease of use. Adjust it a little bit. And then usefulness. This is perceived usefulness. We're going to make it easy. Usefulness. 
are just. In the end, compatibility. Compatibility. Now we need to connect the variables. Ease of use. Usefulness. Compatibility. Also, adoption, intention, and technology use. Okay, now we have the model ready. We need to calculate it. You can choose standard or unstandard. Here, I'm going to use unstandard. First thing first, let's check the reliability and validity. Chrome Alpha, very good, or larger than 0 0.7. AVE, or larger than 0 0.5, very good. Second thing, we need to check the HTMT discriminant validity. Here, you see that we have a, a potential problem here between the compatibility and the usefulness. We borrowed this data set directly here for a demonstration and we didn't do any adaptation. We keep the model the way and the measurement as it is. Then we need to check the R square. Here we have quite good R square, but again, the acceptable level of the R square depends on different research context. Some, some discipline may have a higher acceptable level, some have lower. Now let's check the VIF inner model. The VIF variance inflation factor of the inner model is very important because we want to measure the amount of multicollinearity and see how much the variance of a regression coefficient is inflated due to multicollinearity. Our data is quite good here. They are all below the defined critical level of 5. Now, what else do we need to do? We also need to check the p-value and for the p-value, let's go to bootstrapping. Okay, we have some are good, some are not, and then we will interpret later. Check the PLS predict function. We go here. The derived Q square value is good, it's above zero. And then the PLS SEM root mean squared error and mean absolute error are good. They, they should be smaller than those of the linear model benchmark, and they are. Okay, now we have already got all the parameters that we need for the analysis from PLS SEM side. We can go to the part two video and see from the NCA side.